when we all agree that the Kaaba, according to the Quran, was built by Prophet Abraham and his son Ishmael, that is literally thousands of years. So there must be a lot of changes, especially if you remember we said when Ibrahim السلام, built the Kaaba, uh, he put the bricks on top of each other with no cement, with no binding materials. So since uh, Mecca is like a valley and surrounded with huge mountains, in case of heavy rain, it will cause this rainfall to create um, a very violent and huge torrents. So a few times that led to drowning the Kaaba and affecting the building of the Kaaba, such as the one which happened uh, during the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was approximately 35 years old. That means that happened five years before he was appointed with the prophethood because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was commissioned with the prophethood at the age of 40. So five years before that, there was a very big torrent and the surge led to flooding the entire Kaaba and it affected its building. Because of this very violent torrent and the Kaaba was affected, the Meccan chieftains gathered and they discussed the concept of rebuilding the Kaaba, but they were kind of reluctant because they knew that this is a sacred house. Who would dare to undo it? Who would dare to demolish the building, even though their intent was good? So one of them by the name Al-Walid ibn Mughira decided to take the initiative. He said, I'm going to take part some of its bricks and to demolish some of its bricks and uh, if it goes by safely then this is a sign from God that go ahead and do it and he did so he broke some of the Kaaba and he spent the whole day and night afterward people were anxiously waiting to see what is going to happen to him but when nothing happened to him it was like a sign it is okay to go ahead and demolish the Kaaba in order to reconstruct it and rebuild it even though the Meccans were pagans and they worshipped idols, but they appreciated the sacredness of the Kaaba and that's why they made a vow not to invest or spend in the reconstruction of the Kaaba any unlawful earning, such as money was earned due to prostitution or due to dealing with usury or theft. Uh, when they gathered all the halal fund that they assumed it was all lawful, it, the fund wasn't enough to build the entire Kaaba. So it was kind of short and they built it on two of its original foundations which is a Ruknul Yamani and a black stone corner only. But the other two corners towards the northern side of the Kaaba, they were short of fund. So they decided to complete the building like that and leave about seven yards which created what is known as al hatim or Al-Hijr. This arch, which you see, brothers and sisters, that people perform tawaf outside it, is known as Al-Hijr. Some people mistakenly call it Hijru Ismail, assuming that Ismail has been buried there, which is not true. The Hijr was created thousands of years after the building of the Kaaba. It was actually created as a result of not being able to have enough lawful fund to complete the building of the Kaaba. So those seven yards approximately from the wall of the Kaaba to the arch was actually uh, of the original building and the uh, space of the Kaaba. So they put this arch and it was known as Al-Hatim or Al-Hijr. This is a part of the Kaaba. In the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is a sound hadith narrated by uh, Umm al-Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers, Aisha radiyallahu anha, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, had it not been for the fact that your people are new to Islam, I would have rebuilt the Kaaba and I would have rebuilt it on its original foundations. So extend the building to cover Al-Hijr or Al-Hatim and make two doors, one in the east and one in the west where people can enter from one door and exit from the other. Because when the Meccans uh, built the Kaaba, they kept only one door, so only the elite people would enter the Kaaba, not anyone. And it was kind of elevated, they had to climb it with uh, stairs or steps. So the Prophet ﷺ wished that 
he could do that, but because people were new to Islam, he didn't want to confuse them and cause any mess, especially the Kaaba had been always perceived even before his prophethood as a sacred thing. Now the Meccan uh, tribes, each tribe took care of building one wall until they came to the point of placing the black stone in its proper place. A big fight erupted between them. And the fight escalated to the point that there was going to be a, a serious fight and bloodshed. So one of them by the name Abu Umayyah ibn al-Mughira al mahzumi al came up with a very good idea. He said, well, let's seek the judgment and the word of the first person who shall enter upon us. Everybody had been anxiously waiting for this person to enter. And it was none other than Al-Amin, Al-Sadiq, the trustworthy, the truthful. Who was he? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Everybody cheered and he said, Ja Al-Amin. The trustworthy have arrived. We all agree to his judgment because they described him as truthful and trustworthy even before he was commissioned with the prophethood. So the Prophet ﷺ listened to their argument and he said, Just bring me a garment. And they did bring him a garment. So the Prophet ﷺ carried the black stone by his own blessed hands and he put it in the middle. And he called upon each chief of various tribes and he ordered them to carry from one end of the garment. Then he asked them to bring it near to the corner of the black stone in the Kaaba. Then the Prophet ﷺ carried it by his own blessed hands and he put it there by himself. And he saved them a lot of trouble. That was the story of uh, remodeling and building the Kaaba uh, at the time of the life of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ before he was commissioned with the prophethood. Um, because Aisha radiallahu anha narrated this hadith, and during the Umayyad Khilafah, Abdullah, the son of Az Zubair ibn al Awam, was also known uh, as Abdullah, the son of Asma, Aisha's sister. So Abdullah ibn al Zubair ibn al Awam was a, a nephew to Aisha. She was his aunt. She narrated this hadith, and when he was the Amir of Mecca, he decided to fulfill the wish of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he rebuilt the Kaaba with very fine bricks and he extended uh, the Kaaba to cover Al Hijr. The six or the seven yards, he built the Kaaba to cover the Hijr as well. And he raised its height another 10 yards and he opened two doors one in the east and one in the west so that people can enter freely from one door and exit from the other. And every ordinary person can simply attend the prayer inside the Kaaba. But Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi complained to Abdul Malik ibn Marwan who was the Khalifa back then. And he convinced him that Abdullah ibn Zubayr ibn al-Awwam is causing a confusion and he is doing an innovation. So Abdul Malik ibn Marwan ordered the building of the Kaaba to, remodeled, to be remodeled again on the original foundations of Quraysh. And it resulted in bringing about the arsh, which is known as Al-Hijr, one more time. Later on, he has been informed that what Abdullah ibn Zubayr ibn al-Awam did was the right thing. And when he heard the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, he decided to remodel it again. But when he consulted the great Imam Malik ibn Anas, the great faqih, the founder of the Maliki school of thought, he ordered no, uh, you shouldn't be playing games with the Kaaba and people will be very confused. Leave it as is. So accordingly, he left the Kaaba as is. Nowadays, brothers and sisters, some people try to perform tawaf and walk within the Hajj. And that's why the guards push them away and prevent them because